Hey folks, so welcome back to the Mistakes Manifesto. So I've been putting together a series of five videos. This is video number three. And um, basically I've chosen five different areas of business where I see all of my clients and all of my prospects making the same mistakes over and over and over and over again. So I put together this manifesto document to make sure that you out there are not making these same mistakes. And today it is the turn of the biggest sales mistakes that you should all be avoiding. So just to recap, these are the business mistakes. Uh, check out the videos on either YouTube or in the Facebook group if you want to go meet. Uh, if you want to see more detail about each one of these. Uh, so I've gone through these are the eleven biggest business mistakes that I see business owners making time and time and time again. Uh, I, I went through yesterday the marketing mistakes. Um, so you'll see there some of the most common mistakes that people are making, making in marketing. But today is the day of the sales mistakes. So these are the um, top sales mistakes I see small business owners making uh, on a very regular basis. So let's get crack a uh, So first and foremost, you are allowing your clients to self-select your products or services. So what this means is they get to the you get to the end of your consultation or your sales conversation with the client, and then they go, or oh, the only product that the only service I can afford is like your, your bronze package. Okay. Now that's not good. Okay. Because basically what you're allowing the clients to do then is base their decision solely on price. And actually the reality is what they might have come into that sales conversation with is a specific outcome that they were looking for. So most people, when they come into a sales environment, prospects will be thinking to themselves, what's in it for me? And you've got to get to grips. It's your responsibility to get to grips with exactly what their product problem is their pain point, and what outcome it is that you deliver in order to over, help them overcome that problem or move towards a successful outcome, okay? So, little tip, in fact, this isn't a little tip, this is a big tip, this is one of my biggest tips in sales. Once you've gone through some kind of an assessment process with a client and, and sat them down for that sales conversation or consultation or co whatever it is, diagnostic call or whatever it is that you have with your prospect, here, here is the one line that you should complete your sales pitch with. So based on what you put in your assessment form and what we've just discussed during your consultation, the product that I would recommend for you is the silver package. And this is, these are the reasons why, okay? So you, as an expert, are encouraging your prospect to choose the package which is gonna get them the outcome, which you both, which they want and which you can deliver for them, not the one which is cheapest for them. So don't allow your prospects to self-select your product or service. Next up, your pitch is unrehearsed. Now, I've been there, I've done it, you've gone into a pitch, we haven't really kind of, we've kind of just been busy, we've muddled some stuff together, we haven't done our research about the client, we haven't like practiced what our pitch is gonna be. Like now, when I um, uh, pick up the phone on a diagnostic call with a client, a prospect, um, I've already kind of like thought about which package might be appropriate for them. I've got some information from there. I've, I've checked out their LinkedIn profile, their Facebook page and things like that. So mentally, I've already walked through the process, the diagnostic call, which I'm about to have with them. So there's a bit of mental rehearsal going on. But most people just wing it and just hope that they're going to end up with a good result and get the sale. So at least do a bit of visioning about where, uh, about the, 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 the sales conversation you're about to have. Think about how you're going to close that pitch down. Think about maybe if you have a step-by-step -step process, you take your client's prospects through during that diagnostic call or consultation, like mentally rehearse it. Otherwise, it's just going to be a crock of, and the client will see your nervousness, your unpreparedness. Um, think about when you go and watch a, I don't know, a musical or a, um, like a theatre production, and you see that like somebody like fuddles over one of their lines, for example, you just know that like you kind of have that awkward feeling and it's kind of an awkward feeling for them. It kind of makes you a bit uneasy, like how professional is this production? So rehearse, it's really, really important. It just demonstrates a bit of confidence to your, your prospects as well. Uh, this is a really cool one, uh, which actually I've, I've, uh, I've had a couple of interesting kind of um, examples of where I've demonstrated to clients that they have no confidence in their own product or service. And how this shows up is I, I kind of reframe it and say, well, look, hey, would you buy the thing that you're selling for X number of hundreds or thousands of pounds? And they go, well, no, of course not. Um, and actually that just demonstrates that they don't really believe in their product or service. So when you're selling something, I'm just inviting you to like own it and just be really confident about it. Like I would not be coaching if I wasn't confident in the results I could get for my clients, okay? Um, I wouldn't be 
if I was kind of going into it a bit half-assed, thinking, well, I'm not sure whether I can get a result or not, then I'm not being true to the clients. I, don't, I lack integrity. Um, there's no ethics or morals in there selling something which you don't feel you can deliver. So you have to have confidence in your own product or service. Well, what is the point? It's just not fair on the client, on the prospect. Um, this is a big one. Like There are very few businesses, I mean like one in a hundred that I see, like most e-commerce businesses, they have to by, by law now, and especially in the UK, offer a money back guarantee or a return service or something like that, like distance selling especially. But with a, with a service-based business that's offering time for money, um, most, most coaching, like coaches, consultants, uh, creative agencies, anybody, like law firms, whatever, they don't offer a money back guarantee. And again, that just shows me that they lack confidence in their, their product or service. Um, I offer a money back guarantee, but provided it's the, provided you've done all of the things that um, we agreed you were going to do throughout the coaching, and also I agree the goal up front, how are we going to know whether this coaching program, this six months worth of coaching, uh, is going to be successful for you? Um, so we agree the goal up front, that kind of creates a contract, and then the client has to make sure that they do everything that I ask of them. Um, and I, I try and encourage all of my clients, my coaching clients, to get to a point whereby they are confident enough in the product or service that they would be happy to offer a money back guarantee without it being a gimmick and without them, without them basically crapping themselves that they've got to give the money back. Um, so again, like going into a sales pitch with no supporting material is a bit like a, an F1 driver starting a, a race without a pit crew. Like sometimes we do, like we lack confidence in our sales pitch and so um, but it's nice to have assets to fall back on, like, you know, if we've got a book or a brochure or a contract or something, so that when we start to get to that point whereby, like, the client asks us a difficult question, we say, well, it answers it here in my brochure, or have you read this chapter in my book? So having those supporting assets and not just relying on, on this, you know, and your unrehearsed sales pitch, which hopefully now is rehearsed, um, is a really great sort of backup um, plan a plan B. I'm not a big fan of plan B's, but in this instance, like sales is one of the most important things in business. So have a plan B, like have a have a supporting asset. So if the client asks, well, how much is it? You can kind of turn around to the, the pricing page and say, well, it's X number of pounds per month or X number of pounds for this product. Like they can't haggle over it, they can't quibble over it, and those are the things that start to those things where the clients ask tricky questions are actually like the points where we start to wobble a little bit and our confidence drops. So have those supporting assets, it just adds a bit of confidence. Um, again, like allowing pro clients and prospects to haggle with you over things like pricing just demonstrates that you don't have confidence in your product. So you've got to, ha you've got to basically don't allow the, the client to haggle. Don't undervalue yourself. Like don't feel that you have to take on every piece of work. Like no is a really powerful thing. So if a client starts haggling with you, they are undervaluing you. And if you say yes, you're undervaluing yourself. So it's really important that when you've, like this is part of that rehearsal process I talk about. So if you have a, a, a coaching program that costs £10,000, for example, fix that in your mind. My coaching program is £10,000. I'm not going to allow the person to haggle over it. If they're not prepared to pay the money that I feel I'm worth, then I'm not doing this thing. I'm going to say no. We shouldn't be in a position of desperation. We have to take on every piece of work. Just because somebody shows, hey, I'm really excited. I really want to work with you. But can you do it for half the price? No, do not do that. Um, there are times, very occasionally, when I have loved clients, but generally that would be like a piece of voluntary work. Or maybe I've worked with a client for six months and they want to carry on working with me, but don't quite have the money. Or um, maybe they're they maybe I didn't get the results which I um, which I promised them. So I'll always say to them, right, you've got three options. Like one is we just call it quits. You didn't do the things that you said you were going to do. Two is that you did the things that you said you were going to do, but we didn't get the results. Um, and, uh, and, and the third one is um, like, we're just gonna just mutually just agree to go our separate ways, okay? But the second one is like, well, hey, look, I'll give you my thing for free for a period of time. So there are times when you can have loved clients who you do work for, um, you know, either on a free or discounted basis, but they are so rare, so rare. For me, the exchange, the contract happens when you um, pitch, at the price which you're valuing yourself at and your client value, your prospect values you at, and that starts to form the agreement. And in the agreement, that's when we're gonna to agree to get stuff done together, basically. Next up, you're, you're so desperate that you offer discounts. And so, what, when we, you know, this is like, first time you meet somebody, 
you say, well, hey, I'll do my thing, but I'll give you a 50% discount because I know we're going to do work in the future. And like from personal experience, like um, the clients then base their value of you based on the discount. Not So even if they do carry on working with you, um, maybe now at the full price, they're like, well, I'm now paying double what I paid to start off with. And like that initial interaction has just set like it just it's that set their expectations at the wrong level. It's just totally out of balance. So if you're going to start like I always say like discount on volume. So maybe if you've got your core product, well, it's like, well, if you buy three of my core products or if you buy my core product plus the two follow on products, I'll offer a slight discount. So that can help. But the, the discount is built into the price of the core product. We used to do it with a one day branding workshop uh, in my old agency days where we had a follow, two follow-on products, which was a brochure pack day and a, um, a printed like stationery pack day. So, um, you know, I said, if, if find that this is the fixed cost for the one day. If you buy the other two days, then we'll discount it. But the discount was built into day one in the first place. So we weren't really discounting. We just knew that pretty much everybody signed up for day, like two or three days rather than just the one. Um, like it's just about managing the client's expectations. What else have we got? Uh, you're not booking enough or any consultations or sales calls. So uh, I was talking to another coach and she said, Rob, like, I don't understand, like, we're, we're, as good at, we're just as good as one another at our coaching, but you seem so much more successful than me. And I was like, what do you mean by success? And she said, well, like, clearly like, you're getting cl loads of clients through like, booking loads of clients and I'm just not, I'm just not converting people. I'm not, I'm, not, um, you know, I'm not onboarding enough clients and therefore I'm not making enough money. You just seem so much more successful than me. I had one simple question. I said, how many consultations did you book in the last six months? Now, I know that I've done well over 70 consultation diagnostic calls with prospects over the last six months. She said she'd done 10. 10 consultations. And I said, well, there's your problem. If you've only done 10 consultations, the maximum number of clients you're going to book is 10. But the reality is, I know that out of every 10 consultations that I sit, I get maybe three or four converting. So even if you'd sat 10, you've probably only got three or four clients. And the reality was she'd only booked, I think, one, one and a half clients. It wasn't even quite two. She, she'd like given somebody a cut down version of like her core product. So like if we're not, if there's not enough activity there, if we're not booking enough consultations and sales calls, we're not going to sell stuff. We're not giving ourselves the best opportunity to sell. So I always say like sales, sales is the wrong, um, like lead indicator. Sales is the wrong key, key performance indicator. If you're, if you're basing your success on your top line, I what's your turnover, how many things are you selling? Like that is the wrong key performance indicator. The best key performance indicator you can have is a lead indicator. How many leads am I creating through marketing activities? And how many consultation or sales calls am I actually booking? Because if you get 70 leads, you will book 10 sales calls and you will get two clients. That is as simple as that. Those numbers I haven't made up, then they're, they're, I wear them, that is my mantra, 70-10-2. Like 70 calls, 10 appointments, two, two sales. That is it, plain and simple. Um, that num that, that's Google said those numbers with their gazillion bits of data in their white paper, zero moments of truth. That is what they say, 70, 10, 2, all the way. Um, and most, most service-based businesses, especially coaches, consultants, are in that sort of ballpark, like 70, 10, 2. Mine is like 81, uh, 12, 4. Okay, that's my magic formula for my business. So I know that I need to be booking at least at least two diagnostic calls um, a week, generating at least like 10 calls, 10, 10 leads per week, eight to 10 leads per week in order to fill those two diagnostic calls. So I'm like active all the time, doing videos, content, whatever, but I'm funneling people into my, into my call booking and my assessment process. Finally, we've gone to all this hassle, like all the hassle, all of this hard work of, um, of getting prospects into our funnel, we've they've they've we, they they put their hand up and said, "Hey, I'm interested in your marketing thing. Like, can we have a call?" And you say, "Yes, go and fill out my assessment form or, or give me your details here." Now go and book your sales call, um, the sales call, the diagnostic call, or consultation. We've sat the diagnostic call or consultation, whatever, and then we kind of pitch them something at the end of it, and then we do nothing afterwards. And I see. People who are like just active, they're like bang, 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 chucking out sales calls, and they're like, their conversion rate is just shockingly bad. It's not even like one in five, it's like one in six, one in seven, one in ten, even like one in twenty, and they can't work out why they're not converting. And basically now, um, the moment you've done your sales call with somebody, 
and they walk out of that door, um, like they could step off the pavement and the car comes around a corner and but, uh, like it's a bit of a shock to the system and they just forget all about you. Or maybe like within a day of your consultation, you have a consultation with somebody who has a follow-up and nurture sequence in place. So um, if you're not actually following up and doing proposals and doing a follow-up call and a couple of like emails to people, just say, hey, checking with you, how's it going? Like you're failing at sales. Like sales, sales doesn't just stop once you've made that pitch. It's like the whole follow-up and nurture sequence. So having that closing process to follow um, so prospects don't ghost you it's like absolutely vital because the likelihood is they're just going to get distracted or sold to by somebody else or get busy with another partner business, especially if you're in like that, that micro business, solopreneur type space, and you work with other solopreneurs. They are just like frenetically like busy delivering their stuff, doing their books, doing the sales, doing their marketing, blah, blah, blah. Um, and they're just going to get distracted from buying the thing. And actually, the moment somebody walks out the room, like they're, maybe they're a warm prospect. As you pitch, they're like 100%. They walk out the room, they're like cooling off 95%. Um, maybe they get back to their desk and like uh, something else crops up, they're like 80%. The next day, they're like 60, 50%. You know, so, so all the while we're not nurturing and following up, the client is just going colder and colder and colder. So we need like a really solid like follow up process and give them like a reason, a compelling reason to, to buy into our, our process. Um, what am I covering tomorrow? So I'm doing systems mistakes tomorrow uh, in, in video number five. So one thing which I will say is, whoops, didn't need to move that one. One thing which I will say is, guys, stop making bloody mistakes. Like, I've given you the magic formula. Like, we've gone, I've gone through the business mistakes, the marketing mistakes. I've just gone through all the sales mistakes. So stop making all of these mistakes. Start taking action. Start making sure that you are converting, you're, you're filling up your marketing funnel, your bucket, making sure that it's watertight. You're not losing leads, you're not losing prospects along the line, that you're creating valuable content, you're not making business, general business mistakes. Now you can stop making these mistakes, you can do a lot of that, I've given you tons of value I hope, so you can stop making these mistakes like right now, just through some of the tips I've done in this like 17 minute long video, or you can choose to join in the Fearless crew, like £47 a month, that's all it is, by going to robinwake.com forward slash fearless forward slash application, and uh, or we can have a chat. You can go to robinwhite.com forward slash um, assess assessment to fill out my assessment form, and that will tell me what shape your business is in. I do a free diagnostic call. Uh, the group program at forty seven pound a month includes a two hour webinar Q and A as well. Um, I love doing those because it solves business owners' problems like there and then. It's like a live coaching session with a group of people. It's absolutely fantastic. Plus, you get access to the Facebook group, plus a whole load of other great stuff, including my e learning programs and me of course which is like the main thing um, and you know if you've got any questions like fire them into the comments box below this video um, I'd love to help you grow your business stop making those mistakes like start saving you time start filling up um, like getting you more leads and start converting better because like the, like life is too short why should you be going through like this struggle uh, on your own like get some help um, at the very least, go and speak to a business buddy and like have a coffee and share some some war stories. Maybe share some of the mistakes that you you've discovered you're now making as a result of watching this video. Uh, that's me done. That's video three out of the five video series. Like I said, tomorrow we're doing systems mistakes. Can't wait for that one. I'm a nerd. I love systems. Uh, so I will catch up with you for the next uh, episode.